Here's Uplifting. the thing, it's not our world. None That's of this is real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. We don't matter. Oh, wow. There's the good news. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most awkward things said by celebs on live TV. Can we take back races and say discriminatory? Because I think that's a better word. <laughs> yes, it is a much better that's word. That's a better word, and I am very discriminatory. For this list, we'll be looking at times celebrities said something that made a situation tense, uncomfortable, or just plain unfortunate to watch. We'll also be including moments that weren't necessarily immediately broadcast, but said in the moment and were aired unedited. What's the most awkward thing you've said? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Cybertruck Windows When first unveiled by Tesla in 2019, this electric pickup truck had a lot of people talking, and perhaps not for the right reasons. One of the features touted by Elon Musk is its supposed tough exterior, including near-indestructible windows. To demonstrate the strength of the glass, Musk had Tesla designer Franz von Holzhausen toss a metal ball at the windows only to have them shatter. Oh my Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Musk tried to play off the gaffe by quipping they'll fix it in post, but it was too late. The cringe had already been felt by everyone watching. We threw wrenches, uh, we threw everything, we even literally threw the kitchen sink at the, at the, the, the glass, and it didn't break for some weird reason it broke now, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just fix it in post. Number 19, I knew you were trouble. Winning an award is generally a happy occasion for most. We say for most because Taylor Swift hasn't always had the best experiences at award shows. At the 2013 MTV VMAs, Swift won for Best Female Video for her song, I Knew You Were Trouble. Taylor Swift. While accepting the award, she thanked the director and her co-star, but suddenly called out the person who was the inspiration for the song. Although not mentioning him by name, we presume she's talking about Harry Styles. I also want to thank the person who inspired this song, who knows exactly who he is, because now I got one of these. Making things a bit more awkward is when the camera cuts to Styles sitting in the audience. When asked about it later, the former One Direction singer states he likes jokes as much as the next guy. She likes a joke, so I was about you. Yeah, I like a joke as much as the next guy. Thanks to Wonder for sponsoring today's video. Wonder uses powerful AI to turn your thoughts into digital creative works of art. If you can think of it, Wonder can make it a reality. Wonder's app is easy and fun to use. Type out your idea, pick from one of over 20 art styles, and let Wonder work its magic. There's no limits to what you can create with Wonder. Now, let's get creative. Okay, Spider-Man in an emo band. I think this one is gonna be really great. And for art style, I think I'll do pen and ink. I feel like that would give us great results. And oh my goodness, these are so cool. Look at that, he really looks emo. With premium, your full creativity is unleashed. Select over 20 unique styles and create unlimited art faster and without ads. Click the link in the description to download the free premium version of Wonder and put your creativity to the test. Number 18, no hugs for Kesha. While at a red carpet event, comedian Jerry Seinfeld was giving an interview when self-proclaimed mega fan Kesha excitedly approached him and asked for a hug, which Seinfeld immediately shot down. Can I give you a hug? No thanks. Please? No thanks. If that wasn't bad enough, the TikTok singer repeated her request and was denied again. After she left, he claimed to not know who she was. I don't know who that was. <laughs> yeah, it was Kesha. Okay, well, I wish you the best. He would later explain that he's not up to date on current celebrities and legit didn't recognize her. Poor Kesha was heartbroken, and frankly, so are we after seeing that. I got very excited. I would too. And, like I an excitable like, oh. like, puppy, especially when I heard his voice. But then I like went back and I was like, oh, me. <laughs> Number 17, there is no Jim Carrey. Actor Jim Carrey decided to show up to New York Fashion Week and apparently was not enthused to be there. 
He claimed that he wanted to be present at the most meaningless event he could find. You gotta admit it's completely meaningless. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating Do you icons. In icons, boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. He proceeds to rant on how he doesn't believe in icons and personalities, and that we're all a field of energy. Okay. He further claimed he doesn't exist and that there are just things happening. There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. There's just things happening. And there are clusters of tetrahedrons moving around together. Okay. The interviewer doesn't quite know what to make of the interaction, and neither can we. Number 16. Joaquin Phoenix quits acting. On one of the more bizarre appearances on a late night talk show, Phoenix was very uncomfortable and terse in his responses to Letterman. And you were terrific in the film. I really enjoyed your work. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't help that he was sporting a bushy beard and wearing sunglasses, causing Letterman to ask Phoenix about his time with the Unabomber. It's later revealed that he's decided to quit acting to pursue a career in hip hop. Understandably, some in the audience laugh at this revelation, causing Phoenix to seriously chastise those for doing so. I do um, more hip hop music. Hip hop music. Um, is this a joke? <laughs> what, do you, what do you have them on? It was later revealed he was in character for a film he was working on at the time. It didn't make things any less awkward. Uh, well, we wanted to do a film that explored celebrity um, and explored the relationship between the media and the consumers and the celebrities themselves. Number 15, Dakota Johnson's birthday dispute. While appearing on Ellen, things got awkward rather quickly with the titular host. After wishing Johnson a happy belated birthday, she quickly wonders why she wasn't invited to the party. How was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Johnson insists that the host was invited, but Ellen remains unconvinced, putting Johnson on the defensive. Johnson has to confirm with a producer that Ellen was, in fact, invited, before suddenly remembering that she couldn't attend the party because she was out of town. I yeah, was invited? Right why didn't I go? I don't know. Was it, was it? it oh yeah, I had that thing. Um. <laughs> Number 14, Mark Wahlberg ignores Sarah Silverman's trauma. While on the Graham Norton show, Sarah Silverman recounts how when she was younger, she would wet the bed. I had to borrow pajamas and I, usually I would just have to like pinch myself awake all night, you know, just to, to not pee. And then I did. I fell asleep and I did. Naturally, this may cause some anxiety in a social setting, such as at a sleepover. As she's trying to explain how she was almost exposed at a friend's house, fellow guest Mark Wahlberg begins slowly inching away from her and eventually into the lap of Norton. Following this interruption, she continues her story only for Wahlberg to start saying something to Norton, causing Silverman to directly call out her fellow guest for his rude behavior. <laughs> This <laughs> <laughs> Number 13, Madonna Goes There. The atmosphere was uneasy from the start when Letterman beckons the singer to kiss someone in the audience. Hmm. Go kiss the guy in the audience. It would knock him out. <laughs> Look at that guy, just like on the forehead. Just on the forehead. Things don't get much better when the host brings up Madonna's interest in basketball. At this point, she looks up at the boom mic and comments on how long it is, eliciting some uncomfortable reactions from the crowd. That microphone is really long. <laughs> Speaking of the NBA. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I always go there and really I don't care. After briefly mentioning her relationship with Charles Barkley, Letterman moves on to ask if getting her nose ring hurt. Madonna misheard and thought she was being asked a more intimate question about her relationship, much to the chagrin of everyone else. No, but you, you have your, you have like yes, a, a nose ring there. Now yes, what happens when, when, you, when yes. you take that out? Will you, will you ever take that? <laughs> what happens when you take it out? Yeah. <laughs> Both questions? Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. At least she seemed to be enjoying herself. Number 12, Russell Brand's psychoanalysis. 
In what was supposed to be an appearance promoting his world tour for his stand-up comedy, things went off the rails rather quickly after a comment about Bran's accent. He objects to how the hosts talk about him as though he isn't there, which isn't an unreasonable complaint. You are talking about me as if I'm, I'm not here and as if I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> He further criticizes news media in general, saying they tend to focus on superficial things instead of substantive information. You forget about what's important. You allow the agenda to be decided by superficial information. What am I saying? What am I talking about? Don't think about what I'm wearing. These things are redundant. When Micah Brzezinski says she's distracted, Brand comments on her hand gestures with a bottle, making an uncomfortable situation even more so. What do you think that gesture means, the way you're touching that bottle? What does that indicate? <laughs> what is that? What's the subtext of that? I think we gotta go to break. You need to lose that ring, Mika, because it don't mean nothing to you. Number 11, Chicken of the Sea. Ah, uh, the age-old question if tuna is a fish or chicken. Wait, that's not right. But it is what Jessica Simpson wondered aloud in the debut episode of her reality TV series, Newlyweds, with her then-husband, Nick Lachey. Is this chicken what I have or is this fish? Much like the rest of us, he could only look on in confusion as to what he had just heard. Simpson clarifies that she knows it's tuna, but on the can it says chicken by the sea. So stupid. <laughs> Don't make fun of me right now, I'm not in the mood. Once Lachey explains that Chicken of the Sea is the brand name and that tuna is similar in popularity as chicken as a food choice, she says that she misread the label. A lot of people eat tuna, it's like a lot of people eat chicken, so it's like the chicken of the sea. Okay, I understand that. I was, I read it wrong. Number 10, Michelle Rodriguez's lack of diversity. Ambushed by TMZ for an impromptu interview, the Fast and Furious star tactlessly squashed a rumor suggesting the actress was set to replace Ryan Reynolds as the new Green Lantern. Stop stealing, you know, all the white people's superheroes. Like, make up your own, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Greatly disappointing fans, Michelle Rodriguez essentially asserted that minority actors should not be attempting to land roles of traditionally white superheroes. At the time, Michael B. Jordan had already been cast as Johnny Storm in the new Fantastic Four, and the actress's comment were seen as counterproductive to the push for more diversity in Hollywood. Later on, Rodriguez released an apology video to clarify the controversial quote. That it's time to stop. Stop trying to, you know, take what's already there and try to fit, fit a culture into it. I think that it's time for us to write our own mythology and, and our own story. Number 9. Tom Hiddleston's tone-deaf Golden Globe speech. A quick story. I know it's been a long night, but... Um... I, w I recently went to South Sudan. Transforming a triumphant moment into a tiny PR disaster, Loki would have been better off just saying thank you and walking off stage. Awarded Best Actor in a Miniseries or Television Film by the Golden Globes for The Night Manager, Tom Hiddleston wandered into a poorly conceived tangent about a group of Médecins Sans Frontières medics who had approached the actor during a stay in South Sudan. Uh, and they were a group of Médecins Sans Frontières doctors and nurses and they wanted to say hello because during the shelling of the previous month, they had binge watched The Night Manager. Satisfied with knowing The Night Manager provided entertainment for these brave men and women, Hiddleston clearly wanted to highlight the good humanitarian work carried out by these organizations, but ended up coming across as self-congratulatory. The idea that I could provide, or that we could provide some relief and entertainment for for the people who work for UNICEF and Médecins Sans Frontières and the World Food Programme. He would later apologize, citing nervousness as the reason he expressed himself poorly. Number 8. Pete Davidson Shows No Love I think I speak for all crazy people when I say <laughs> Mental health is always a challenging subject to address. Here's an example of how not to do it. In an article published by the Players' Tribune, Kevin Love opened up about a panic attack he experienced during a match between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Atlanta Hawks, only to be taken to task by Pete Davidson during a Saturday Night Live sketch. It's totally cool that like he had a panic attack, but if you're gonna write an article about being unstable, Leave it to the big boys, all right? <laughs> a comedian and actor diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, Davidson trivialized, if not downright mocked, Love's episode and expressed an oddly elitist view on who should be allowed to discuss mental health issues. I'm sorry you missed your three-pointer, Kev, but uh, I've been in therapy since I was six years old, and uh, I wanted to kill myself when I was eight. 
Tough news about your rebounds, though. Number seven, Raven Simone is okay with discrimination. Bad jokes are forgivable, but this one was just plain insulting. Can we take back races and say discriminatory? Because I think that's a better word. <laughs> yes, it is a much better that's word. That's a better word, and I am very discriminatory against words like the ones that they were saying in those names. Primarily known for Disney's That's So Raven, Raven Simone implied there's a limit to acceptable ethnic names during an episode of The View, and jokingly showed support for workplace discrimination if a person happened to be called something like Watermelon Drea. I'm not about to hire you if your name is Watermelon Drea. It's just not gonna happen. The outrage was so severe that both Raven and the actress's father saw the need to apologize through Facebook. The best thing to come out of this whole ordeal was the reply of Trey Melvin, also known as Watermelandrea Jones, to Raven's reference. Okay. I'm not gonna hire you if you look like Chicken Little. I'm not gonna hire you if you look like the mascot for Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. I'm not gonna hire you if you look like Big Bird. Number 6. Kathy Lee Gifford didn't get the memo. More often than not, celebrity blunders tend to simply be hilarious. However, this moment was nothing short of heartbreaking. While he appeared on NBC's Today show to promote the upcoming Madagascar 3, the seemingly average interview took an awkward turn when Kathy Lee Gifford, who was clearly unaware that Martin Short's wife had tragically passed away in 2010, brought up the actor's marriage. And he and Nancy have gotten one of the greatest marriages of anybody yeah. in show business. How mm -hmm. many years now for you guys? We uh, married 36 years. Somehow, Short remained calm enough to play along with the host and pretend that nothing was wrong. But you're still, like, in love. Madly in love. Madly wow. in love. Wow. Why? <laughs> cute. I'm cute. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is true. And you make each other laugh. Yeah. Later that day, Gifford sent out an apology tweet and the comedian expressed no hard feelings. Number 5. The Mating Habits of Sharks and Whales Following the release of Sharknado, Tara Reid earned a guest spot on Shark After Dark and decided to use this opportunity to spread a bit of knowledge. And then I said, like, whale sharks. I'm like, oh, that must mean a whale and a shark have sex. To avoid coming across as ignorant, Reid conducted some research prior to the interview, but the actress clearly needed to reread Wikipedia's entry on whale sharks. Well, how, do, how does a whale and a shark have sex? And then I looked Was up, there a video of it? No, because oh. there's a thing called whale sharks, yes. so I thought they must, you know. Stumped by the thought of a mammal and a fish doing the business, Reid unleashed a rambling monologue before seemingly concluding that no, sharks and whales do not have sex. And who says TV can't be educational? And then I realized that whales were mammals and sharks are animals. Number four, the price of fame. First world problems? No, this goes far beyond that. Evidently, Paris Hilton has endured everything bad that can possibly happen to a person. During an interview with Pierce Morgan, Paris and Kathy Hilton discussed some of the positives and negatives associated with a celebrity lifestyle. I've really grown a thick skin over the years. When asked if privacy is a price worth paying for fame, Hilton spoke about the countless terrible things that had been said about the socialite over the years. Everything bad that can happen to a person has happened to me. Nobody's personal issues should be dismissed, but Paris's self-absorbed comment reeked of naivete. Number 3. Tom Cruise has done the research. Promoting War of the Worlds was apparently the furthest thing from this Scientologist's mind during an interview with the Today Show's Matt Lauer. You see, here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. Tom Cruise is no stranger to controversial stunts, but the actor's rant on psychiatry was equal parts obtuse and offensive. And I know that uh, psychiatry is, is a pseudoscience. The Mission Impossible star labeled the entire field as a pseudoscience, blasted Brooke Shields for using antidepressants to help with postpartum depression, and declared there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance. If you understand the history of it, it masks the problem. That's what it does. That's all it does. You're not getting to the reason why. There is no such thing as a chemical imbalance. Cruz's comments were so off-base and potentially harmful that the American Psychological Association had to publish a statement in response. Number 2. Kelly Osbourne's Misguided Pro-Immigration Stance Good intentions can only take you so far. While appearing on The View, Kelly Osbourne countered Donald Trump's stance on immigration in arguably the most unintentionally racist way imaginable. If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? Quickly taken to task by co-host Rosie Perez, Osborne seemed to instantly regret saying anything and tried to backtrack. In LA, they always... But, but, but they Latinos don't, are not only the no, only people No, I didn't mean it like that. that. Come on. Unsurprisingly, the celebrity came under heavy scrutiny and Kelly took responsibility for the blunder in a Facebook post. 
Things were made even worse due to the fact that just a couple of months prior, Osborne had publicly criticized Julianne Rancic for a similar insensitive comment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kanye West Thinks Slavery Was a Choice Where to even begin? How about that time Kanye West crashed Taylor Swift's VMA acceptance speech? Or when the musician abruptly announced that George Bush doesn't care about black people? While undoubtedly talented, the rapper slash producer's antics tend to distract from the music, and Kanye cast a huge shadow after stating that slavery was a choice in 2018. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years? That sounds like a choice. Whatever the point might have been, West failed to express it in a way that made any sense. It's like we're we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes too, too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. Though Ye has admitted he has mental health issues, he has continued down a path of making awkward public appearances, including during a televised meeting with then-President Donald Trump, as well as with many other controversial statements on other media. But the campaign, I'm with her, just didn't make me feel as a guy that didn't get to see my dad all the time, like a guy that could play catch with his son. Thanks again to Wonder for sponsoring today's video. With powerful AI, Wonder transforms your thoughts into captivating digital artworks. Describe your idea, pick a style, and let Wonder work its magic. Unlock premium for over 20 different art styles, unlimited artworks, no ads, and more. Let Wonder bring your artistic vision to life. Click the link in the description to download the free premium version of Wonder and put your creativity to the test. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.